Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna talk about blood supply to and from the kidneys. So first thing is, remember your kidneys, they sit retroperitoneal, that's behind your gastrointestinal tract. They weigh around about 150 grams each. So that's only about 0.4% of your entire body weight. But even though they're only 0.4% of your whole body weight, they take 20% of your cardiac output. So that means every minute, 20% of your five liters so that's one litre goes to your kidneys. That's a lot of blood to these tiny little organs. And the reason why is because we need to filter the blood to create urine. So first thing we need to talk about is just the very brief anatomy of the kidney. What we've got is the renal cortex. Then we've got the renal medulla on the inside and you can see multiple renal pyramids. Now these renal pyramids, there's usually between eight to 12 of them. And at the papillae or the tip or the nipple-like projection, you've got what's called minor calluses. They're look like little cups. These cups collect the urine that is being made and dripping through these renal pyramids. So these minor calluses, you can see, all drain into one big cup that we call a major calyx. This major calyx then collects at the renal pelvis and then that turns into the ureta that goes to the bladder for storage. Now, as the blood vessels are coming in, we know that it's coming from the abdominal aorta. And the abdominal aorta has gone through the diaphragm. It's given off a celiac trunk and three branches from the celiac trunk to feed some parts of the GIT. Then it's had a superior mesenteric artery branch to feed other parts of the GIT. And now we've got the renal artery branches going either side to feed obviously the two kidneys. So we need to draw this renal artery. So here we've got the renal artery branch coming off. And let's label that. So we've got the renal artery here. Renal artery. Now the renal artery as it goes into what's called the hilum of the kidney, so the hilum is where all the blood vessels go in and out, this is also where the ureta comes out, it's also where we've got lymphatics and nerves coming in too. So as we've got the renal artery coming in, it ends up having multiple branches. And these multiple branches of the renal artery, they're called segmental branches. So let's label these segmental branches. segmental. And the segmental branches will continue to branch and move between the renal pyramids. So as they branch and move between the renal pyramids, like you can see here, what these are now called are interlobar branches. So an interlobar branch are going between the lobes and the lobes are referring to the renal pyramids. So like I said, we've now got interlobar branches. Interlobar. The interlobar branches, as they go between the renal pyramids and they go up towards the base of the renal pyramids, you can see it's heading towards the cortex. As it gets there, what happens is they give off multiple branches and these branches turn at this right angle. And as they turn, they go, along the base of the renal pyramids like this. Now, as it turns and branches, these are now called arcuate arteries. And arcuate is referring to the fact that it's just turned a corner. So like I said, let's label these. These are the arcuate branches or the arcuate arteries. Now the arcuate arteries are going to give off more branches in the cortex. And these branches here are called interlobular branches. So we've already had interlobar, now we've got interlobular. So let's just quickly go through what we've had so far. The abdominal aorta, the renal artery, the segmental arteries, the interlobar arteries going between the renal pyramids. Then we've got the arcuate arteries turning the corner at the right angles at the base of the renal pyramids. Then we've got the interlobular arteries. Now the interlobular arteries have one more branch and these branches come off like this. Now what's important about these particular branches, which we call afferent arterioles, afferent arterioles, is that these afferent arterioles actually 
start to move into what we call a glomerulus. So I wanna zoom in in this particular area here for a second. Let's zoom in here and draw it over here. What we've got is like I said, an afferent arterial. What do you know about arterioles? Arterioles have heaps of smooth muscle in them. So they can change the diameter of that blood vessel. So we've got the afferent arterial and the afferent arterial then turns into this messy looking structure, which is now a capillary bed, and it's called a glomerulus. A glomerulus, a glomerulus is Latin for ball of yarn. Glomerulus, because that's what it looks like. The important thing about the glomerulus is that this articulates with the renal capsule. And then you've got the nephron. Now this is the filtration unit of the kidneys. What happens is you get the afferent arterial, the glomerulus, and then on the other end of the glomerulus, you've got the efferent arterial. And the efferent arterial turns into a capillary bed, which wraps its way around the nephron or the tubules of the nephron. And this is called peritubular capillaries. So like I said, afferent arterial, glomerulus, this is an efferent arterial because it's coming away from the glomerulus. Efferent arterial. And the efferent arterial then wraps itself around the tubules of the nephron where filtration has happened. And now we've got a peritubular, peritubular capillaries. So if we were to draw this up here, We've got the afferent arterial, then we've got the glomerulus, then we've got the efferent arterial, then we've got the peritubular capillaries. And now what happens is we're now in the venous system of the kidneys. And again, what you have is the same heading back. So we've got interloba, then we've got arcuate, then we've got interloba, so we had interlobular, arcuate, interloba, we don't have segmental, but what we then turn into is the renal vein. And the renal vein will come back and go to the inferior vena cava, which will then go up to the right hand side of the heart, the right atrium. So this is gonna be the vena cava. So how do you know what the veins are called? for the kidneys, well, they're gonna have the same names as the, as the arteries coming in. So let's quickly summarize it. What we've got, first of all, is renal artery. Then it turns into segmental artery. Then it turns into interloba. Then the interloba turns into arcuate. Then the arcuate turns into interlobular. Then interlobular turns into afferent arterial. Then the afferent arterial turns into the glomerulus. The glomerulus then turns into the efferent arterial. Which then turns into the peritubular capillaries. Which then turn into the interlobular uh, uh, vein. Again, vein. Then it turns into the arcuate vein. Then it turns into the interloba vein. And then the interloba vein turns into the renal vein. And the renal vein then turns into the inferior vena cava. So that's a lot of blood vessels just looking at the arterial system to the kidneys and the venous system to the kidneys. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense.